Hey folks, it's Ardwolf and it is time for the eagerly anticipated Compass Games Expo loot video. Um, so I'm going to go through a number of lots of items here that I picked up at the Compass Expo in Meriden, Connecticut, which I have just recently returned from. Um, so first I think what I'd like to do is look at the, uh, at the magazines that I picked up from Compass directly. Now as you probably are aware, Compass Games runs a great sale where everything but the last two or three releases are 50% off, essentially, or, or a little more in some cases. Um, and the magazines were ranging between $15 and $30, depending on which paper wars you were looking for. So the first one that I picked up, these aren't going to be in chronological order, uh, I picked up three. Finnish Civil War, this is Paper Wars issue number 84. This is a game about the Finnish Civil War. This looked pretty good to me. The map looks good. All three of these are Hex Encounter games. Uh, as you might expect, would be my preference. And all three games looked interesting enough that I grabbed them. I also grabbed Paper Wars number 93, a more recent issue. This has the game Vagram 1809. And this also, you know, Hex Encounter, also looks fairly interesting. It's a very interesting Napoleonic battle. Um, and the oddball of the bunch is Paper Wars number 86. This one got a little crinkled in transit. That's my fault, not Compass's fault. Um, this is Paper Wars 86. It's got the game inside called Nomads No More, Central Asian Conflicts in the Wake of the Russian Civil War. As you may know, if you've watched me for any length of time, I am a, uh, I have a particular interest in the Russian Civil War. I've got a lot of games on it, um, and I managed to grab this as a related conflict. And the reason why it's buckling a little bit is somehow this slid out uh, in the box and the counter sheet ended up under the magazines. It is fine once it gets punched and all these are going to get punched. So as you're probably also aware, at the Compass Expo they do a flea market which is set up basically identically to the flea market at Cons World Expo in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, but obviously it's much smaller since this drew something like half or a little less than half the number of people. It was about 150 in attendance, uh, which I am led to believe is very good, uh, especially considering that for, it's, it was down last year for obvious reasons. Now, I went last year too, had a great time. Check out that video if you want to hear the full convention after action report. Uh, but I did pick up a number of things in the flea market, generally speaking, for very good prices. Um, one is Against the Odds issue number 57. This contains a Crowning Glory Austerlitz 1805. Uh, this is a Thai Bomba design, but I am looking forward to reading the magazine. And it's an, it's an interesting battle as well, Napoleonic battle. I've been on a bit of a Napoleonic tear lately, as you were going to see in the month of November, but you didn't because other things occurred. Watch the live stream for details. Um, but this game looks fairly interesting too. Against the Odds has a very good reputation for quality of magazine games and it was flea market items so it was not full price. Um, another thing I picked up is this very interesting piece. Hexy, make, take, take note. The Army of the Heartland, the Army of the Tennessee's Campaigns. This is part of the Civil War Campaigns series by John Prados. Um, at one of multiple series with very similar names. Uh, but this is the John Prados series. The maybe better known title in this series is the Campaigns of Robert E. Lee, but this is actually the ones I was one I was looking at. It is Civil War operational. I have heard mixed things on it. One thing I have heard that is not mixed at all is that the maps are absolutely gorgeous. Rick Barber maps, and they are. They're really. It's got two maps in it, which I'm not going to show you, and there's not going to be an unboxing of any of this loose stuff, but there will be a, a large number of unboxing coming from the Compass Expo. So Army of the Heartland, I'm very curious to see this system. This is what, you know, Western theater campaigns, the Army of the Tennessee from 1861 to 1863. So you kind of get the whole spectrum there. Um, real interesting look and title. I'm of course a huge fan of the great battles or great camp, well, both of them, battles and campaigns of the American Civil War. So it'll be interesting to juxtapose what John Prados did with this series against what Joe Belkowski did in Great Campaigns of the American Civil War. So looking forward to giving this a more detailed look. So a lot of games from the gamers have fallen into my hands over the years. I'm talking pre-MMP the gamers, and most of them slipped through my hands. Uh, but when I saw the chance to pick up a couple at very good prices in the flea market, I grabbed them. Uh, this is one, April's Harvest Shiloh, uh, 1862. This is a design by Al Wambold, and this is part of the Civil War Brigade series. 
Now, I am not positive that I have ever owned a game in the Civil War Brigade series, but it is a well-regarded series that is nevertheless no longer active through MMP, the new owners of the gamers. So I wanted at least one to uh, to kind of take a look at it and explore the system. Um, and this is as good a one as any. Shiloh's a battle I'm somewhat familiar with, um, so I should be able to get this uh, to the table. And I believe this guy is unpunched as well. It's got It's one map um, and not too many counters. I think it's one counter sheet as well. So not a huge game at the brigade scale, uh, but looking forward to seeing what that's got to it. One gamers series that has passed through my hands at various times is the Napoleonic Brigade series, which is a related system, but for Napoleonic battles. Um, I had, I believe, Asper Nestling and or Austerlitz, and I got rid of them at some point. Um, it's another one that, because I'm on a big Napoleonic kick again, I would like to take a take a second look at. This is Marengo. This is a punched copy, David Powell design. Uh, Mr. Powell is an expert on many fields inside and outside of wargaming in the field of general history. Uh, Marengo is a pretty interesting battle as well. Um, this guy's punched, uh, but nevertheless, it looks great. Um, so we'll try and get some exploration of that done at some point. Uh, another real bargain was Drive On Washington. This is part of the great battles of the American Revolution system. Game design on the box here is credited to Tom Hudson um, with Redmond Simonson graphic design. Now this is punched and I actually picked it up off of Bil uh, Gilbert Collins for a for a very good price, I managed to intercept Gilbert as he was putting his stuff on the flea market table. And I was like, ooh, what do you want for this? And I gave it to him, and he gave me this, and I'm very happy. It's punched. It's clearly been played, but it's also certainly appears to be pretty well taken care of. This is one in the great, one of the earlier phase of the Great Battles of the American Civil War series that I did not have. I don't have them all. Um, I have all the new ones from GMT, but I don't have all the old ones from SPI. And I'm probably never going to have all the old ones from SPI. But nevertheless, this is a battle, Monocacy Junction, that has not been dealt with particularly often. There's at least a couple other games on it, um, including uh, To Take Washington, part of the Line of Battle series, also at the regimental level from MMP. And that is a, I think it's a Dean Essig design, and it's definitely a Dean Essig series design, and I didn't pull that off the shelf to check. Um, so interesting battle, uh, very much looking forward to poking around in the old great battles of the American Civil War system. I almost said campaigns. It's a miracle I haven't done that yet. The one shrink-wrapped thing that I picked up from the flea market was this. Speaking of things that have passed through my hands that I have let slip through my fingers, I did at one point own two games in this series. This is the Eagles of France series by Hexasim, publisher, and Walter Vidovsky, designer. And I have a very high opinion of this series, and it was kind of dumb to get rid of them. I don't know what happened. I might have sold them. I might have given them away. I might have traded them. No clue. Uh, but in any case, uh, Lenny 1815, this can be linked with the Quattro Bra game. I have actually seen that done. Gorgeous game, gorgeous graphically, and uh, mechanically looks super interesting as well. I haven't played the series, uh, but I have, I mean, we're not talking about a series with 100 games in it, right? I believe there's four games total. No idea what is planned next. I certainly hope it is something, because it is a very sharp-looking series and some very interesting rules for commands and orders in this series, and very different from what you would have seen in the Napoleonic Brigade series from the Gamers and Dean Essig. So, uh, Lenny 1815, I, I never had this one, but I had Quattro Bra and Austerlitz, and eh, now i got to buy Quattro Bra again. How about that? Now we're going to start talking about the stuff from Company games proper. Now, I always struggle when I buy a game at a convention, and it's in the shrink wrap, and I'm super excited, but I really can't film unboxings at conventions. At the, I have done it before. They look like garbage. I don't want to do that. So uh, I did buckle to temptation and open two of the things that I bought directly from Compass, and this is one. This was one of the last copies of Absolute Victory. This is a game design by Ben Madison and Wes Ernie, um, and it is a very interesting-looking design. I'll, I'll be blunt and say that I do not like the map. I think it is ugly. But the game looks really interesting. It is an event-driven World War II game. It does not look particularly complicated, but there are two huge fat books of just events. Um, and we're there's a real good chance this is actually going to hit a table in the next 
12 months or so because I got a local guy who's really interested in playing it, like local to the new place, really interested in playing it. And I think there's an excellent chance uh, that we will, in fact, at least give it a shot. And if I hate it, you know, then I'll, then I'll let you know. Um, but it looks very interesting. Um, so I'm glad to have picked that up uh, at last. I, I mean, I pulled, I dragged my feet on that for eons. Um, next pickup from Compass is the second one that I couldn't resist the temptation to paw through. This is Fatal Alliances. Um, this is low in inventory over at Compass, but they had it for a great price, and I picked it up, and I actually picked up a copy for Fucko as well. Um, I did also get the errata counters. There's errata counters. Uh, not too many uh, in here. And, and what this is, if you don't know, um, is basically a full game standalone treatment of World War I using the World in Flames system. Now, it's not quite as complicated as the full modern collector's edition World in Flames, but it is nevertheless not a simple game. It is on three maps, two of which are Europe, and one of which represents the rest of the planet. Um, so I'm pretty sure, without checking, you could probably not use the rest of the planet map and, and keep this to a two-map game. And in fact, when somebody asked me for a recommendation for a two-map World War I game, this is what, at Compass Expo, this is the one I pointed them to. I haven't played it, but I have played World in Flames, of course, so I have some idea of what, what it will look like as a World War I game, and I'm pretty confident that I'm going to end up liking this. It may end up, in fact, being my go-to strategic level-ish World War I game, uh, but we will see. In the meantime, I'm happy to add it, and I'm happy to have gotten it into the collection before it runs out of stock at Compass. They sold a bunch of them. I was certainly not the only one to buy one. Um, but, you know, I bought two. So I would estimate that they have something in the neighborhood of 100 copies left, plus or minus. So if you're interested in it, probably buy it now. Right now, it's on sale big time on the Compass Games website, so there will not be a better time. A very uh, Something else I was looking for last year, and they just didn't have uh, at the time at Compass Expo, was the Russia Besieged Player's Guide. This is for the Art Lupinacci game, uh, I got to meet Art there. He's a great guy. Um, Russia Besieged Deluxe Edition Player's Guide. Um, I haven't opened this yet. I may do an unsleeving of this. I probably won't. Um, I haven't gotten to play Russia Besieged yet, but it looks like I, what I believe is going to end up being my personal go-to version or iteration or... Uh, reflection, if you will, of Russian campaign, the classic uh, Russian campaign from Avalon Hill and earlier Jedco, which Compass has also redone, and which was on a bunch of tables at Compass Expo. So this is a, basically a magazine. It does have a half a sheet of counters. It's got some variants in it. It's got a bunch of articles. It's got some, I think, a couple of new scenarios. And apparently there are blank pages at the end that you can use to take notes. So glad to add that. Um, and it was also pretty inexpensive. Another thing that I have been dithering over for the last three times that I have been at Compass Expo, and which I believe was new when I went to my first Compass Expo, which was the second Compass Expo, which I think was three years ago, and that is Crusade and Revolution. Um, I'm not even sure if this is fitting in the frame or not. Okay, minor adjustment made. Um, this is in a big flat box. Uh, not like a standard... It's pretty close to a standard size, like... Uh, GDW flat, actually. Um, this is a game on the Spanish Civil War. It is a point-to-point -point game uh, rooted in the Paths of Glory point-to-point -point system um, with, of course, you know, Spanish Civil War uh, relevant chrome on it. This is one of, if you look at BGG, this is one of Compass's very highest related games, game by David Gomez Rioso. Um, very interesting looking game and highly regarded. I don't have a game on the Spanish Civil War except for the Europa game on the Spanish Civil War, which I am not going to play. So uh, this will henceforth probably end up being my go-to game on the Spanish Civil War, which is a very interesting topic that I really haven't delved into very much, and which obviously had a significant impact on World War II as well in a number of ways. Next up is an older game from Compass that was going to be the start of a series, and unfortunately, I guess the designer has not progressed with the series particularly far. This is for Novo 1495, and it's a game from Brian Miller, who has done a lot of work with Compass, uh, but he has not continued this series. This was supposed to be Order of Arms, uh, 1000 to 1525, and this is a battle in the Italian Wars. I don't think I have a game on this battle, unless it is in um, uh, one of the Men of Iron games in Archibus. That's possible that it is. Uh, and it says Grand Tactical, and if we look at the back of the box, it's got two counter sheets and one map, and holy cow, do these counters look amazing. Um, 
you know, it was it was on a deeply discounted sale, and you know that is a big part of the reason why I picked it up, frankly. Uh, but I want to check this system out. Italian wars are an undercover topic, which you know, big shock there. Um, but also, it's a it's a absolutely gorgeous game. So uh, very much interested in pawing through this. All of this uh, extra stuff there will be unboxing videos on. One of the other more highly regarded Compass Games games is No Peace Without Spain, which is now four volumes using a similar system. This is the latest No Peace Without Honor. This came out just a couple of months ago. Uh, it's very highly produced. This particular design is by David Mailer. Um, this particular uh, <coughs> this uh, series has generally been very well produced, with excellent quality components, mounted map, and all that stuff. Um, and this is the same series, so very much looking for. I've already downloaded the the rules and have started looking at the rules for this. Uh, believe it or not, this is going to sound probably goofy, but I'd actually like to play more point to point card driven games. Um, and that is one. So very much looking forward to uh, to digging into that. Um, one of the things I played at last year's Compass Expo was uh, Mike Wilner's Prelude to Revolution, which is the build-up to the Russian Revolution. And that's based on an earlier game by Marco Petre called Prelude to Rebellion. Now, this uh, both games, really, and, and I really liked Prelude to Revolution, by the way. Um, this is the earlier game in the series, which I said I was going to pick up last year, and by that time I had already spent way too much money, and I... I, I, I chickened out, but I did pick it up again on deep discount this year. Same, you know, same discount. Um, this is a game about mobil mobilization and unrest in Lower Canada, 1834 to 1837, which, to say the least, is a topic I know zero about. And my understanding is, unless you're from Quebec, they don't even teach about this in school. Um, so it was like a near rebellion that was put up, put down by the British Army. Very inter interesting subject. And I'm not sure how soon this is going to get to the, to, to the table. It's actually more likely that Prelude to Revolution will get to the table first, because that's coming pretty soon from Compass, and you'll hear more uh, from me about that at the time. I'm very excited about that game. I do have a video with Mike about it that I did at Compass Expo last year, so go ahead and check that out. Um, but this is a very interesting looking game. Again, very well produced. Custom dice, um, mounted board, all that stuff. The... These games are a little scary because the map layout kind of leads you to make it look like an Excel spreadsheet. And well, <laughs> while I realize that I am weird and like Excel, um, I think most for most people that's like, oh, this looks like a spreadsheet. I don't want to deal with that. But the, I mean, the Prelude to Revolution was great. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to checking this out as well. And there's talk of additional games using that system as well, depending on how the Russian Revolution one goes. Um, another series it, that's very well regarded from Compass is the Red Poppies series by John Gorkowski. Now, I had Volume 3 uh, already, and it looks really good. This is Volume 2, Last Laurels at uh, Limanova, um, 1914. And I want to say this is East Front, right? Indeed it is. Austria-Hungary's last independent victory against Russia in 1914. Um, so, really nice looking game from a component standpoint. I would assume that the map is not mounted. It certainly feels like it is not. Um, the first volume in the series, unfortunately, is out of print, and I probably am not going to exercise too much energy running it down. Um, but I do want to get one of these games at, to the table at some point. Um, another series game where I had the follow-up, but not the original, was Commands and Colors Tricorn. This is exactly what it sounds like, Commands and Colors Tricorn on the American Revolution using Commands and Colors as the system. Richard Borg game. Um, I know it's well produced. I've seen the components before. Um, it's a great system uh, for, you know, somebody looking for light or relatively quick wargaming. Um, and this is... Frankly, a pretty good detail level, too, considering my uh, general interest level in, in, in this particular topic at this particular scale. Sort of grand tactical American revolutionary battles. Um, so I'm happy to add this to the collection, too. And they had a couple of extra scenarios at the convention as well that I absolutely did grab. All right, another one that I have had my eye on for a while, and I've seen some people play and some people liked it, but it's a bit divisive, is 1866. This is uh, by John B. Fuhrer. Uh, the struggle for supremacy in Germany. So this is basically the war that results in German unification under the Prussians, uh, of course, involving that spectacular leader, Napoleon III. Um, it's a point-to-point -point game, again, based, what, from what I can tell, pretty closely on the Paths of Glory system. Um, so pretty interesting-looking game, pretty interesting-looking subject. Obviously, I do not have anything that covers this already, so I am delighted to add this to the collection, even though 
I have too much stuff. Um, so last of the games that I am able to talk about here today is another series game where I have the follow-up, Enemy Action Karkov, but not the original, um, Enemy Action Ardennes from John Butterfield. This is a very well-received game. Um, it is a solitaire and competitive game. You can play it either solitaire as the Americans, solitaire as the Germans, or two-player, one player playing each side. Um, it is a bulge game. I probably have more bulge games than I need. That's, you know, a common problem. But um, it does look like a very good bulge game. And, but, you know, based on the fact that I'm having a lot of fun playing the current bulge game that we're playing, which is Last Blitzkrieg, um, I have pretty high hopes for this as well. Um, so, and again, it's, you know, it's, it's extremely highly regarded. I know some people complain about the counters, but I frankly have looked at the counters and handled them and don't see the problem. Um, all right, so hopefully you have found this amusing and or interesting. Um, it's a lot of stuff. Um, I got great discounts on everything, and in some cases, fire sale prices from the flea market. Um, uh, check out the Compass Expo After Action Report, which is probably going to broadcast before this video. Uh, that should be relatively soon. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If, uh, if so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel for more Wargame content. And I'd like to give a special shout out and thanks to the patrons of Ardwolf Slayer, without whom it wouldn't be possible to do any of this stuff. Um, so thank you, patron. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy Wargaming! Wargaming!